Hello and welcome to the Everyday Joy podcast. I'm your host, Ash Owen, and I cannot wait to find moments of joy with you today. If you are loving the Everyday Joy podcast, it would mean the world to me if you could go and give us a five-star written review over on Apple Podcasts, or you can just do a five-star review on Spotify. And that way more people can find out about our Everyday Joy. Let's get ready to dive into the Word of God. What I'm trying to do here is to get you to relax, to not be so preoccupied with getting so you can respond to God's giving. That is from Luke chapter 12, verse 32. I love this verse, Shay. Luke 13, 13, wow, Luke 12, verse 32. What I'm trying to do here is get you to relax. That is like, this is up there with one of the best versions I've ever heard. (laughs) It's it's like Jesus. Plain and simple. Yeah. Guys, just chill. Just chill out, guys. Just relax. And I really need to be told that right now. So Literally, thank yeah, you. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> and then it says, um, don't be preoccupied with getting so that you can respond to God's giving. Yeah. Yeah. Um, This verse, first thoughts, says a lot. The first part is just relax. Just relax. All right, everyone. I love it. Communal deep breath. <sighs> Amazing. And... I find, I don't know, in my life, I go through seasons where I might be like totally fine and just feeling really content. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, I'm like, I need everything. I need all of the homewares and all of the clothes and I need to get all the places in my career and I'm not moving fast enough and I'm not moving quick enough and where is all my money gone, you know? Totally. And I love it. And it's just don't be so preoccupied with getting because we do fill our life. We just consume and consume and fill it. We are talking about in the last episode, Ash, of constantly filling our mind Mm. with like noise. Yeah. And this part, this verse isn't dissimilar. Like we're so preoccupied with just getting stuff. Yeah. Getting stuff done or getting stuff like consuming. Yeah. It's so true. And, you know, when when we were kind of breaking it down, we were talking about how, you know, the teaching kind of comes from this um, response, basically, in Luke, where a man's really angry at his brother because he's, their family isn't dividing their inheritance yep. the way that he thinks that they should. And he gets angry with his brother because he's he feels like he's kind of been unjustly given money. And, and I think that what Jesus kind of says in this parable is being like, you know, Wealth will do us no real good in no. this world. I'm not saying that wealth is bad no. because, you know, there can be that unhealthy thought, but when it becomes your everything, yeah, when it's all that you consume, all yeah. that you think about, it's what you're fearful of, what you're, what you're, um, you know, you base every decision around, mm-hmm. that's what then dictates your life rather than 100%. allowing God to be like, no, I got you. Yeah. You're going to give me the peace that I need to know that you will provide and yes. that you are going to get me through this all. Yeah, it's when we're storing everything just for ourselves yeah. or to not even do anything with, just to yeah. have for a rainy day, but the rainy day never comes. Yeah. So you're never generous, Yeah, you know, and both you and I, uh, well, I'm recently married. You are about to get married. Yes. And in this season of life, you must spend a lot of money. It is traumatizing. Yeah. <laughs> it's really scary to be like, oh my gosh, God, you're really going to have to come through because I have no money left. Yeah. And I find myself like when I am financially strapped, I hate it because part of me is like, oh my goodness, where am I going to get the rest of my you know, income from or like how we're going to pay our bills. But then the other part of me is I want to keep being generous. Like I want to pay for someone's coffee. I don't want to be like, I can't do this. I don't want to be exactly like wrestling in my mind going, should I shout them a coffee? Shouldn't I shout them a coffee? Can I afford it? Can't I afford it? Because like, guys, it's coffee. Yeah. Like I just want to be able to give freely. It might not be much, but I don't want to be stressed about it. Totally. And that is what I get from this verse, to not just be so preoccupied with like making sure that mm-hmm. I have enough, that I'm okay, and just relax. Totally. Putting, my, putting all of our priorities into line, yeah. our kingdom priorities. Totally. That generosity should be number one. Yeah. And I think the other thing I love about this, this verse, and particularly this um, version of it, it says, don't be preoccupied with getting so that you can respond to God's giving. Mm. We're so focused often on the next thing that we don't take the time to acknowledge the goodness of God in our immediate season. 
So good. And so I true. think that when that happens, you almost will never be satisfied yeah. because we can't acknowledge the goodness of the now. Yeah, that's so good. A story that comes to mind is there was a time in my life where I quit my job. Yeah. Out of nowhere. Well, not out of nowhere. I had a feeling <laughs> that God wanted me to quit my job. So I did. And I had no backup plan. Nothing. Literally nothing. All I had was a pair of scissors because I was a hairdresser <laughs> and a bathroom. Yeah. And I was just cutting people's hair in the bathroom. So I went from earning a wage and having holiday pay, sick pay, everything super done to literally one week I'd earn $50, you know, and never knowing when it was going to change. But I'm going to be honest, that was probably the freest time of my life because my schedule was finally cleared up. I had so much time to spend with God and I was so happy. I was, I, I genuinely felt free, even though financially I was not, it wasn't consistent and it was never guaranteed. But I just knew, I was like, I had a feeling that God wanted me to quit and I, I felt his protection and his, um, his favor follow me as mm. I did. And then out of nowhere, Literally out of nowhere, I get a text one day saying, hey, Shay, um, you might remember me. I met this girl once, right? You might remember me from Blah Blah's birthday. Did you want a full-time job at Neighbours, which is like, it was my dream TV job. And I said, yes, I would <laughs> I love will that. Happily take that. She said, great. If you drive down today, you can meet the boss. And I drove down and I got the job straight away. Wow. But that would not have happened if my life was full. Yeah. And I was, you know, stressed and working and I didn't have time. But to be obedient, mm -hmm. even though it was scary and I didn't have a lot, mm -hmm. but allowing the space and just allowing God to work and just receiving what he had for me. Yeah. That is so cool, Shay. It's like when you actually get to relax, yeah. to not be so preoccupied, you were given the space to just take, take the fruit of what God had for you. Yeah. And I think that... Oh, it's this, particularly when it comes to finances and particularly when it comes to material things. And I would say this is probably, you know, something that we've all dealt with, but these things take time. Mm. I speak to so many, particularly because I kind of, you know, am in a young adult sort of mm. ministry and world. So many people who think that it is normal at 22, 23 to have everything, right? Mm -hmm. And and it's just not realistic. We see these people on social media yeah. who have all of these things, but they're the one percent. They're not. They're not the people. They're not your everyday person mm -hmm. who is just working a nine to five, exactly. who's just trying to get by. Yeah. Like, give yourselves grace. Mm -hmm. Enjoy the goodness that God has given you. I'm not, and, and we're not saying don't strive for good things. Don't, mm. don't you know, have goals. Like we're not saying that. Yeah, and we're also not saying just quit your job. Totally out of nowhere. Like please don't do that. Shaley, <laughs> Shaley. <laughs> but what we are saying is don't be so preoccupied with getting the next thing. Yeah. That you can't enjoy what God's put you in right now. That's great. You will never be satisfied. And you will almost always keep running harder and harder to the next thing. Mm. It doesn't stop. It no. doesn't doesn't ease off the more that you do it. You never get there. Like you never rat, arrive. Is that what it's called? A rat race? No. What's it called? Yeah, sure. Hamster wheel. Hamster, Hamster wheel. wheel. <laughs> I was like, rat race, why not? But you never arrive. No. You never arrive. You never finally get to a place yeah. where you're like, ah, oh, yes, I did it. A million dollars in my bank account. I am satisfied. No, no, yeah. no. You are always going to want more because that's just human nature. Yeah. And and I guess, and I've seen it so often. There are so many stories of of um, people who work their way up in these corporate ladders or spend their whole lives abandoning their families to, to you know, fulfill the next thing totally, and the next get thing and the yeah. next thing. And, and like we're saying, we're not saying don't strive for good things, no. but... If it comes at the cost, at the, yeah, the cost of never experiencing and enjoying the goodness of God, that's where we need to kind of have a check. Yeah, go, hey, what is my priority, mm. and and how can I, how can I healthily 
step into what God does have and he'll always have new things for you. He'll always have great things for your future. But we can't be so preoccupied with what's going to happen and not enjoying what is happening. So good. What I'm trying to do here is get you to relax, to not be so preoccupied with getting so you can respond to God's giving. All in all, this verse is really about thankfulness, going, hey, God, what you're doing right now, what you have given me right now is so good. You know, my prayer today is that we wouldn't be so preoccupied with getting the next thing, of taking the next big step, but actually going, God, what you're doing in my life, in my family, in my workplace is good. And there are so many great things that I can be joyful about today. I hope that today's episode leaves you encouraged and ready to dive into the rest of your day. I can't wait to chat with you even more tomorrow. But until then, I pray you're able to find moments of joy.